All right. Well, it's been a little while since I've made a video. My work's been keeping me pretty busy. Um, it's the last time I made a video, I believe, with my system, I had the AMD Athlon quad-core processor clocked at 3.74 gigahertz, which actually was working very well for me. And I had a uh, Radeon HD6950, which ran very well and it did everything I needed it to do. Um, as I was getting more into Adobe Premiere Pro for my video editing, I was realizing I needed to get, uh, first of all, an NVIDIA-based graphics card for the CUDA engine support that they have. And I also wanted to trade off and get a little bit more powerful processor. So what I ended up doing was installing the AMD FX6200 series processor after building my friend's 4100 for his gaming system and I did like it a lot and so when I put this thing in I have it overclocked right now at 4.6 gigahertz running perfectly stable and uh, it's with a Corsair A70 air cooler and it does get pretty warm a little toasty but not too bad I think the maximum is like 61 degrees Celsius but I um, haven't really dared to take it any higher and I downgraded my graphics to the GTX 560 from the HD 6950 um, and it wasn't really much of a downgrade. Uh, it does perform a little bit less in games, um, but the system runs Premiere Pro great. Although, uh, the reason why I got the 6200 to begin with was I wasn't willing to really invest in the AMD 8 core um, until they updated their architecture and, and, and you know just really beefed up the IPCs, um, which they did somewhat in the new upgrade, the refresh. So I went ahead and I'm going to be upgrading today to the AMD FX. 8350, which is AMD's newest 8-core, top of the line, uh, clocked at 4 gigahertz. So hopefully for my video editing this is going to really scream. Um, the benchmarks show that at the 4 gigahertz processing speed um, it's about as fast as the 2600K, if not um, also the new uh, Ivy Bridge uh, i5, I think it's the 3750. I believe, I'm not entirely sure, um, and it, it is below the 3770K, which is the i7, which is very popular right now, but uh, I think overclocked you should be should be pretty good. And then I went ahead and went with the Corsair H80 water cooling uh, system. I went one time had the H70, which was really good at the time, and um, that was a little while ago, but I decided I'd go ahead with the H80. I almost got the H100, but there is a way to rig it also in my case. There's like brackets you can hang from the top. I'll show it to you in a minute. But uh, I decided to just go ahead for the minimal degree difference there was. It wasn't worth, I think, like a 40 or $50 change in price. But um, it should do exactly what I'm looking to do with it. What I'll do is um, I'll open up the case and uh, show you what I've actually changed in it since the last video. Um, and then uh, we'll see what the differences are going to look like. There we go. Now I got the side panel off for you. I'm gonna go ahead and show you what uh, what's going on in here. So this is my GTX 560 graphics card. It doesn't officially work with Premiere Pro. Um, you just gotta tweak something in the uh, administrator Notepad file that lets it know what graphics cards are compatible. However, the CUDA engine works great. Um, not a problem at all, and uh, it does play games actually very well as too. Um, I'm able to play like Crisis 2 um, on the not the Ultra but the one below at 1920 by 1080 pretty well. Um, I do have currently 8 gigabytes of DDR 1600 memory uh, at 79724. Seems to be pretty good. I may be upgrading to 16 or 32 pretty soon. Um, I can definitely feel Adobe kind of eating it away sometimes. Um, this is the A70 air cooler as well. It's a very good cooler. Um, it is pretty massive. The one thing I did not like about the A70 cooler uh, on this motherboard for AM3 Plus was that you had to mount it with the air blowing up instead of to the side. So that for me was a change. I really don't like it because it just seems to suck all the hot air from my graphics card since the card cooler is the one with the fan in the middle and not the one on the side so hot air gets circulated in my case pretty well and um, it just eats the processor so I don't know if it's getting a little more toasty than it should 
Um, overall, this is a great motherboard. This is the Asus M5A990X Evo, and uh, it works really, really well. And I love all the new features with the uh, DG Plus uh, VRMs and the uh, new features it has with the UEFI. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and uh, we're going to put these new parts in my system. And uh, just in case you're wondering why this is here, um, since I'll be going ahead and reinstalling like my Windows OS and everything um, while uh, I'm doing this upgrade, I'm actually kind of concerned because on ASUS's website there's no official uh, support for the FX8350 or the new generation uh, for Bashira. So I was looking to see if there's a BIOS update, which I was behind a couple, but it doesn't say anything about support. So I'm really hoping that when I put this in, it's going to be able to recognize the processor and work just fine. If not, we'll be putting back in the uh, 6200, I guess, until they do release an update. At least they better. And uh, we'll do that. But I have this card here to test. And since I'm going to go ahead and reinstalling everything, I figured my friend's having trouble with it. I can't seem to duplicate the problem. So I'm going to go ahead and reinstall it with my, op with my system and see if it works. And if it does, I'll pull it out and just put mine back in. All right, we'll see what it looks like when I'm done. Okay, everything's up and booted, and I'm just going to quickly uh, do a couple things here. We'll show you guys that uh, I've got the 8350 installed and not something else. I just downloaded the latest CPU-Z version so it recognizes it uh, correctly. The other one recognizes it as an AMD FX chip, but not uh, as the 8350. So, and as you can see, there's the 8350. It still says Zambezi though. I don't, not sure why, um, but maybe that'll change. Uh, and then, of course, eight cores, and it's actually running at 4.1 right now. I guess the uh, headroom is allowing it a turbo core. I have not overclocked the processor yet. Um, I will. But for right now, I'm just running it at stock speeds. I'd like to see what this uh, compares to my 4.6 overclocked 6200. Um, so just to kind of get an idea of what this is, if you know how much better at stock speeds, and my memory is running correctly at 797.24. Okay, good. Uh, and then also, if I go Control Delete, just to show you, there's the eight cores. That makes you feel real good. Now you got eight cores. And they're all cores, not threading. It's pretty cool. Um, what we'll do real quick is I'm going to run a Cinebench benchmark. And uh, we'll just see what this puppy gets comparatively. And let's go ahead and run the CPU benchmark. actually ran the test once before already but it seems this one came out a little bit on top so you have 6.88 and compared to my 6200 which was at 4.62 and it ran 5.64 in terms of the score so that's uh, way over a point higher just at stock frequencies with the two extra cores so can't wait to see what it's going to be like with overclocking done to it and from what I understand I should be able to achieve 4.8 quite easily if not 5 and with water cooling, who knows, maybe a little higher. The one thing I will say is um, one reason why I'm uh, formatting and uh, redoing it all and restarting with this new processor is because when I installed the so-called updates 
for the um, AMD FX chips um, that are supposed to enable their better performance under Windows 7 um, but it some reason identifies the processor in some applications especially like 3D Mark or the Cinebench that it is a four core four core eight thread which it's not it's a eight core eight thread so I'm not sure what it did you can see my six cores is six cores six threads so I want to reinstall Windows and get that out of there and uh, that way I can do some benchmarking. Supposedly it helps performance, but I don't think I noticed any difference whatsoever. I guess the way it threads certain applications and so on, but um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, do a few more benchmarks and things um, after I've reinstalled Windows, and I'll put those up here for you guys. Um, and everything else seems to be going quite well. My desk is an absolute disaster now, but uh, that's the joys of building computers. And this is just a card for testing. Anybody's watching, I'm not using this card. Um, I am keeping my GTX 560 right there. But uh, I'm testing this out for a friend, which right now I don't see any problems with it. But um, I'll post some videos for some more benchmarks and things like that.